Well, hello, hello, all my amazingly beautiful Zodiac family and friends. My name is Libra Empress, and this is another episode of Terror and Tarot with Libra Empress. Today, we have a black eye. Black Eye Kids, two animated horror stories by IMR Entertainment. Without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Last night, I was watching that 70s show reruns, Eyes Heavy and Mind in a Daze. I was starting to fall asleep when I awoke to what I thought was a loud <laughs> by the patio door. The chocolate chip cookie I was halfway through slid off my hand, somersaulting down my torso as this noise brought me to an awakening twitch. Just an animal, I thought, or the house suddenly. Eric Foreman is so goofy. Donna is way out of his league. Eric is lucky. I like this show back to sleep. This time from the ceiling. I shrieked. What the hell is that? This time, I sit up with upright posture like I'm ready to focus on any minute detail that strikes my senses. I turn the kitchen light on, just out of a general state of fear, without really any concern about anything being in the kitchen. I check the back deck from the thump from before. That's super weird, I think. Nothing else happens, so I start to relax some. I'm not really worried at this point, but a little on edge. I'm a college student, spending the summer at home with my parents, working in downtown D.C. They're at the beach, so I'm alone in this rather large house. It's 10.36 p.m. when the door knocks. Seriously, I think? No, again, if I were on the set of a horror movie, or had just been watching something scary for that matter, I would have drawn an immediate connection between the thump noise and the door knocking unusually late at night. But neither of these things applied to me at that moment, so I didn't. I was still kind of anxious about those thumps. But when the door knocked, my attention immediately forgot about the noise that was likely nothing to worry about. Probably a salesperson, or a mailman. I remember one time a few years back, a UPS man rang our doorbell at like midnight to drop something off. I was the only one awake at that time, so that had scared the shit out of me back then. Maybe it was something like that, I thought. Most likely scenario would be my buddy Frank, who considered coming over but said he was really too tired. He can be a little spacey though sometimes, so I guess he could have changed his mind without telling me. I guess I'd go over there and at least tell whoever the hell it is that I'd like my privacy. Unless it's Frank, of course, who I will then remind how spacey he can be. A little weirded out by the situation, though, I grab the first thing resembling a weapon I can get my hands on. It's an old lacrosse stick. I hold it from the head with the shaft facing outward like a lightsaber. As I turn the corner to my foyer, I see through the door side windows a pair of skinny legs with odd worn slippers. All right. This is weird. That's definitely a skinny chick. Maybe she's confused? Trying to visit a friend and knocked on the wrong house? The house next door is about the same size and doesn't really look a lot like mine, but I don't know what else it could possibly be at this point. All of this enters my mind in a matter of seconds, between my footsteps in the kitchen and the doormat between the front door and the rest of my home. As I stand between the large, modern door and whoever the hell is out there, I leave my lacrosse stick on the ground behind me so the stranger won't see it. As my hand floats hesitantly towards the doorknob, I hear a voice coming through the other side of the door. No clear words, just light whispers. I assume someone must be with the slippers girl, because I haven't even opened the door yet, and as far as I can tell, this person hasn't even seen that someone is home. Unless, maybe she's talking to herself. That was a thought that didn't come to my mind at all. My hand stopped frozen in air, about halfway between the rest of my body and the door, like I was doing some weird robot dance move. I wait for several seconds, disturbed by the odd synchronization between my movement towards the doorknob and the voice outside. I wait longer. No voices. I take a deep breath through my nose and out through my mouth. I open the door about three quarters way quickly, like a toddler anxious and curious to discover the monster in their closet. I stick the right half of my body out, facing two dark feminine figures on my front porch. The first thing I notice is those beat up slippers. I look up from there, my head and neck tilting slightly upward to see the rest of her. Straight, black hair, uncombed, 
mounted in different directions. She looked sickly, shaking in the cold, with a hooded sweatshirt and tiny khaki shorts. She's about 5'3 and looks 13 years of age, staring straight forward, which for me, at about 5'9, standing on a raised surface above my lowered porch, is at my pelvis. In the dark, I cannot make out the features on her face, but I could tell something about her was awkward. The way she stood there, off balance, her neck tilted to the left side like a chewed up overused doll. Before I can react in any way, I observe her partner, about a half foot behind her and to the left. A noticeably younger girl, maybe nine years old, but with about an inch on her older sister, wearing a ragged dark blue shirt, black pants, and rain boots. She had similar black hair, though she didn't have the same bizarre demeanor as her older sister. I look down at these two girls, and I have no idea how long it has been since I opened the door. Have they said anything? What do I say? This is fucking weird. Uh, can I help you two? I mutter out in the tone I typically use talking to kids, but with an undertone of chill in my voice. I stutter some when I'm nervous or excited, and here, I could barely make out a word. Hello, sir, please. We are cold, and would like to use the phone. The younger one says, her head facing straight forward. Her tone. It was like nothing I had ever heard. It was feminine, sure, but each word left her mouth fully independent of the one before. Like they were just words being spit out of a machine and placed in the correct order by a third party. Almost like a robot. But she was clearly human. A young girl I'm speaking to. Yet somehow very, very far off. She didn't sound her age. She sounded at least 14? Maybe 15? But she looked no older than 10. Why did she speak me and not her older sister? What is going on here? Is her older sister shy? Mentally handicapped? Am I dreaming? And what does she mean about using my phone? It was like she was speaking off of a script and mixed up her question. I wonder if she means to ask me something else. Not sure how to respond to this arbitrary question, I manage. Um, well, I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you two lost? First, nothing. Just stares, straight forward directly ahead, as if with no visual awareness. Then the younger one says, Please, sir, we are alone. We need to call home. Let us in. Her response, with the same monotone voice, didn't really answer my question. It was like she was speaking without any concern over what I was saying, just when it was time for her next line. And the last part, let us in. Like a command completely separate from her prior polite and candid requests. Trembling in fear and confused, with a strong sensation telling me something was horribly wrong, I said, Well, uh, I'm sorry, but I can't let you into my house. You'll have to just stay here while I grab a phone and call for you. I couldn't leave these two kids just stranded out here, but I knew. Something in the pit of my stomach just told me I couldn't let them in. I was scared shitless. Two just looked straight forward, not responding, and suddenly the older one who has yet to move or say anything changes her expression completely. She squeezes her fists as they shake at her sides as if in great pain, and without moving her face or pale neck, makes a smile, showing all of her teeth at once. They were sharp, inhuman, like an animal's. At this, I make an obvious, loud scream of terror. The younger one notices my fear and looks up at me, and her pale face, her eyes, Blackness. Pure black. No clear iris or retina. Like two black marbles. Then I noticed her silence smiling on her sister's black eyes as well. A grotesque nausea fills my stomach, closing in on me. Choking me. I'm frozen. I can't manage a scream. I just can't. I'm lost in fear. My entire body speeds up, tingling, numbing, and I lose myself. Finally, after what feels like several minutes... I let out a noise of horror that I don't think I've ever made as I close the door in front of me and retreat to the safety of my house. My body is shaking. I stand, crying, trembling in front of my door. I need to reach my cell phone, which is in the family room, and I can hear that 70s show in the background, which brings me some relief, but it sounds off now, foreign, almost like another language in my fearful state. I need to call the cops. I know that I can't let them in. Get the fuck out of here! 
I yell while banging on the door in an attempt to scare them off. Undiscernible sounds come from the other side, like animal cries or barks. It doesn't sound like the younger girl. I know it isn't. I know it's the older girl. The silent meant the off one. But I just can't fathom this. No. Fuck no. I need to reach my cell phone, but I can't move. I can't lose track of them. I can see the slippers in the side window, and I know that she's still there. More animal noises from outside. I scream, yell, bang my lacrosse stick against the door. Anything I can get out of my tired lungs and muscles. I felt like I was being attacked by a grizzly bear. I was in full-on survival mode, doing all I could to scare them away. But any noise I made was matched by the older girl with her disturbing barks and screams that to this day haunt my dreams. Then from the other side of the door, I hear a muffled, We just want to call our mother. From the young girl. Please, we are scared alone. Let us in. Let us in. That last part. Let us in is the same cadence twice over, like a recording. Please let us in. Like a chant. Let us in. Let us in. Let us in. The younger girl continues, each demand louder and more assertive than the one before, as the older girl's noises match her demands. I wait for any sign of safety, of this horrible nightmare coming to an end. I continue screaming at them, until finally it stops. The noises. The chanting. Gone. The slippers are gone. I look out my window, sprinting legs. The other girl running the speed of a male track star, but with her legs twisting over each other like a circus freak. This is so fucked up, I think to myself. I see her trail off, catching up with her younger sister, who must have given the orders to leave while she stayed for a minute or two, barking, screeching, and yelping like a Neanderthal. I watch as the older sister finds her younger sister, laying on the other side of the road. They stand there, not looking back at my house, just staring straight ahead, the other way, like they were waiting for something. Someone. Then suddenly, a large figure walks towards them. Long legs and arms, and lanky, inhuman features. With the shape of a woman, but far too small and awkward in form. Like one of those scarecrow animation figures from a Tim Burton film. This creature, this monster, leads them away as they went. I didn't leave my front door the entire night. I couldn't sleep, and barely have since. Close family, my girlfriend, and friends want to believe me. They say they don't think I'm crazy, but I feel they don't actually believe me. This is so fucked up, whatever this is. Whoever they are, it's real. Like they're subhumans trying to take over us. I don't know what this is, but they create this energy of fear and terror like nothing I've ever experienced. I lay awake at night, terrified when I open my eyes. That off older sister might be outside my window, hanging from a tree, smiling at me waiting for me to walk outside and leave the house. This happened to me earlier today, and I'm super tired, so I apologize in advance for any spelling errors. I'm a freshman in college, and my spring break had started. Instead of going to some crazy beach, I was off spending my week at home, because winter ended so early, I found myself mowing lawns about a month earlier than usual. I drove to an elderly woman's house to mow. I had mowed her house for about four years now. I used to live down the street from her, but I had since moved away. I kept the job because mowing is great money for a little work. She had been diagnosed with cancer, and has not been doing well. She's been in and out of the hospital, so I knew how to let myself into the garage through the back to open the garage door. I did a once-over around the outside of the house, picking up sticks and lifting up downspouts. I even threw a muddy Nerf football back into the neighbor's yard. I went back into the front yard, and it was a beautiful day outside. I had lived here for my whole childhood, so I stood out in the driveway, taking it all in. There was a couple playing tennis on a court. A few people were by their cars in the parking lot of the park, and everything else was so peaceful and quiet. A perfect afternoon, so I didn't think anything like this would happen. I saw my old next door neighbor outside, and being the socially awkward penguin I am, I wanted to avoid conversation. I pulled the cord and started the mower on the second try, 
popping in my headphones and pushing it into the backyard. It was a big backyard with three trees, two gardens, and an oddly shaped bench that was extremely hard to maneuver around. I was at least used to these things having dealt with them for years, and I was just getting into my groove when I saw a kid out of the corner of my eye. He was just standing in the backyard. I don't know how long he had been there or how he had even made his way without me seeing him. I jumped, as I was not used to being disturbed while I mowed the lawn. I pulled my headphones out, and he just looks at me from across the yard. He looked pretty normal from where I was standing. It seemed a little hot to be wearing jeans and a sweatshirt, but I didn't think anything of it. He was a male, looked to be about 13 years old, but I don't know, I'm horrible with guessing ages. I looked at him for a couple seconds before I realized he wasn't going to say anything this far away, so I reluctantly turned off the mower. My senses were already working overtime, besides the ringing of my ears, when the kid asked, Can you help us? Us? I think to myself, there's more than one? I get the butterflies in my stomach, because my keys, my wallet, and my cell phone were left out in the garage. I wanted to reduce my pocket weight. I hurried to the front, and there was a second boy there, younger than the first by a few years. He didn't move his feet, and just kept his eyes on me. I honestly didn't care about how they were standing or looking. I made a beeline for my valuables and made sure nothing was taken. I turned around with everything sorted out in my pockets, and I almost jumped again. They had closed in on me, and they were looking up at me. That's when I saw that they had these fucking huge black eyes. It felt so small. So mortal. And those eyes. That's all it took for me to realize I wasn't as in charge as I thought I was. Can you help us? The older boy asked again. We're thirsty, and our dad wants to know where we are. My head is just spinning. I've read the stories before, and I know what they're up to, but I can't hide. It isn't my house. There's a water fountain just across the street, and you can use my cell phone if you want. I already know what they're going to say. Just please let us inside. We've been outside all day, and we were very thirsty. Do you need to let us in? I said no. I was trying so hard not to look them in the eyes. I knew I shouldn't, but I wanted to learn more. I wanted to describe them. So I just caught a glimpse of the little ones. Pitch black. Unblinking. I immediately thought I could hear his voice in my head, even though I had never heard it. It was almost as if I was arguing with myself. I was fighting the voice as I was slowly taking steps back in the garage. The kids didn't move forward, and they didn't say anything else. They just stared, and I kept walking one foot at a time. Finally, I was close enough to hit the button to close the garage door. I could still see their feet, unmoving as the door slowly closed down, forcing me into the darkness. For about three seconds, I was relieved that I had escaped. And then, I realized that I was trapped. I couldn't get to the main door of the lady's house, and I couldn't go back out the front. The only option was to leave through the back door that was always left unlocked, the one that I had come through earlier. I quickly checked for what I came in with when I realized that my keys, which I clearly remember stuffing into my pocket earlier, are now in the palm of my hand. It dawns on me that I can't even remember it, but I almost gave them my keys. This is too much for me to handle, and the darkness of the garage isn't helping, so I open the door and the sunlight washes over me. I felt so happy, it left me unprepared for what happened next. I close the door and turn the corner to make my way to the front, and the oldest was alone walking my path. I asked nicely, let us in. I spun around and bolted into the backyard. I didn't look back to see if I was being chased. I ran past the tree, past the moor I had left out, and I knew that the little one would be ready to meet me around the corner. Sure enough, he was there, and this side yard was more narrow than the first. I put on a burst of speed, and I knocked the kid down. I was about to feel bad until he tried to bite my hand as I pushed him. The little fucker tried to bite me. I ran for a few more strides, so close to my car parked on the street, when I stopped. There was no traffic. Nobody had called my name. There was no reason for me to stop. Except, I did. The little boy was crying. I had never heard somebody cry like that. It was crystal clear, like it was coming from my headphones. I turned around and he was sitting up, sobbing. I wanted to walk back and help him, apologize. I wanted to open the garage and find a way in the house to let him use the phone. I wanted to do everything in my power to help him. 
Let us in. We need the house. He said through tears. Almost brainwashed a second time by an eight-year-old. I couldn't believe it. I shook it off one last time and ran into my car. I locked the doors, and I didn't look back until I was onto a different street. I called the lady's house to tell her I hadn't finished, and that I would be back tomorrow. Thankfully, she must not have been home. At least, she didn't answer. Alright, that was Black Eye Kids, two animation horror stories by IMR Entertainment. Now I pulled five cards out from the dead spread and this is what I got. The person we're connecting to tonight, the deceased person, was someone who was very stubborn, but an empire, empire builder, alright, laid the law down. Looking back on their life, they had a lot of passion in regards to every aspect of it. Not just sexual passion, but like a passion to live, a passion to start and do all of their goals in their wish fulfillment. A lesson they would like to share is, with time, your confidence will return. Keep working at it. Something they wish they'd paid more attention to. They wish they would have manifested a better life. And weren't manipulated. A message they would like to share is, Life will toss obstacles and life lessons at you. Poverty and financial loss are just ways of God telling you that there is another path of success for you toward your destiny. All right. Thank you so much for listening to me. My name is Libra Empress. Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you for next week's Terror and Tarot with me, Libra Empress. I love you all. Bye-bye.